All right, and let's now come to our third problem or example three here to give uh, viewers more opportunity to see the steps and be able to follow along with the, with the highlighted steps in finding confidence interval to estimate a population mean value. And so now let's spend some time reading the, uh, the wording description of our example three right here. So it says a larger sample of gas prices was also collected on uh, June 1st, 2020. So right here at this moment right here, let me now allow me to show that larger sample. And uh, it, it just basically think of that even though right here it says a larger sample, but just treat that as a different sample. Happens to be the one, happen to be a sample that's larger than the one that we have already used for our first two examples. And so right here is the bigger sample. And so looking at a, a data being like this, then uh, at this point it, it would be a better idea that we could just leave this for the calculator, enter the entire list here into your stats command if you are using a, a TI-84 or 83 calculator and then quickly use the calculator there to obtain these two values for you. And so, and that's what I did here actually, and I, I asked the calculator to give me the sample mean value right on this data right here. And then the calculator came back for me with the mean, sample mean value is $1.64. So I purposely brought up this problem for anyone uh, viewing this video to, to uh, put yourself in that situation that if you really are uh, conducting a, an, a, a confidence interval problem completely from scratch where you are you are given or you found a sample on your own right here, then this is how you can do. You can just simply and easily find the sample mean and the sample standard deviation from, from the using any the technology that's strong enough to, to find these values for you. And the calculator should also be able to give quickly count how many pieces of gas price in your sample for you. So no one, nobody really have to count uh, manually how many prices being involved, being included in this sample. But that immediately tells us a lot of uh, given information regarding our sample already. And so now allow me to swing over to my um, writing board so that we can sketch down the information. And so as far as the given information, For our sample mean, we are now looking at a different sample and a lot bigger. Sample size here is being 100. And uh, the sample mean we found there in our other sample, in our different sample here is being a dollar 64. And we happen to have the same sample standard deviation in this sample. But it could, it could also be a different value. Point to five. And now let's get back into our wording description of the problem and, and let's read further to see what we are instructed to do. So using the provided sample, construct a 99% confidence interval to estimate national mean gas price on that same day. And so right here with this piece of uh, highlighted information, then it's indicating for us that uh, Yes, our goal here is to find a confidence interval, but further it's given us, it has given us a, specific, a specified uh, confidence level being 99%. And so now I can also list that down as my given information. Confidence level here is being given at 99%. And again, being written in the text, then usually it's written as a percentage, but when we're actually later on using that for real-time calculation, then I'm going to need to use that as a decimal. So it never hurts to write it, write it ahead of time, confidence level being 99%, which is, can also, which is uh, the same as 0 0.99 in decimal. And that's all of the given information we had. And so now, again, any confidence interval to estimates a population mean value must be at the end in the form of the sample mean plus and minus the margin of error. 
And margin of error we have seen throughout the, the, the entire lesson so far. What we need here as a formula is T sub C as a value to eventually calculate for multiply with the fraction S over square root of N. And so now as you as I have explained a few times already throughout our previous examples and problems, then I don't need to rush into finding uh, writing down these two values because they are simply given already. So our my main focus now is to calculate the T sub C value and which will also give the viewers more opportunity to repeat the steps and you are more than welcome to follow the steps along as you can. And so now for calculating T sub C value, step one here will be 0.5 plus half of our confidence level. And with our confidence level here being at 0.99, and we're looking at 0.5 plus 0.99 over 2. And calculation of mine came out being 0.995. And again, later on, when we use this value to give that, to input into a calculator or a technology to, to calculate our T sub C, then this value, 0.995, will be understood or will be regarded as the left area or area left or for short, just some area. Step two is to calculate the degrees of freedom for our sample. Degrees of freedom of any sample is found by the sample size minus one. And in our case here, since our sample is being as large as 100, we are looking at degrees of freedom being 100 minus one, which comes out being 99 for our degrees of freedom. And so now after getting degrees of freedom, and our left area calculated. The last step now is to be finding our T sub C value. And getting this value is simply just a matter of running some kind of technology. And in most cases, the technology being referred to here is the INVT command that comes with a lot of calculators, in, in, including your the standard TI-84 calculators. And so with, with, my tech, with my TI-84 calculator, now I'm going to run my INVT program. To get there, I'll go second variables. I'm going to scroll down to the option that says INVT on my calculator. It says option four. It could be some other options with, with other calculator. But uh, basically, we look for that command that's called INVT. And again, as I mentioned, uh, even even if you are outside of the TI-84 calculators, uh, very likely that uh, your calculator you are using will have this. We will we'll name the command as INVT as well. So basically, you just look for that. So now hit enter. So with our area, with our area this time being 0 0.995, I am going to give that uh, 0 0.9995 to the calculator. I'm going to hit enter. But in this problem, we're looking at degrees of freedom being 99. So this value for degrees of freedom is 99. Now I'm going to hit enter a few times. And again, so, so on some calculators, including the, the earlier TI-84, you might have to type in your command manu manually. So basically what I'm saying is after you retrieve the INVT program, after you call the INVT, command, it might just simply print it right on your home screen like that, like this. And what you need to do is simply type in the, the value. So usually area first, then a comma, which can, which can be found right here on your keypad. And uh, with, a, with the degrees of freedom after and with a closing parentheses. And now let's hit enter to um, find our final T sub C value. So now with this problem here, we're looking at T sub C value being 2.6264 and a lot longer. And before I swing to my uh, 
before I swing back to my writing board right here. Let's have a look to see how we can also calculate T sub C using my little portable program that's written in Microsoft Excel right here. So when, you op when we open that file, then uh, the box here, we are going to enter a pointer 995 for our left area. Hit enter. And uh, now with four degrees of freedom, let's enter 99. And so this is going to be our final T sub C value, which looks, which is exactly the same value that came out from the, the uh, TI-84's uh, IMVT command. But it's just the version here is a little uh, shorter in, term, in terms of the, the rounding. And so now, generally speaking, Again, any time that you have to execute some kind of INVT command, either on your TI-84 or run the, the, the little program that I developed or use any other program out there, then with the, this command being the call of, then make sure we got to first give it usually the area value first, the left area value. Then we also must provide the degrees of freedom. And then we end the program syntax line right here with the closing parentheses and we hit enter. So the answer now came out for us. If we recall that was 2.626405 and a lot longer. And again it is anyone uh, viewing this video's responsibility to watch for uh, any rounding requirements for your T sub C when you're actually doing your own problem about this kind. But uh, usually throughout my lectures or throughout my examples in the video here, I am going to round T score, T sub C value to three decimals. So 2.626 is my T sub C value. All right, and so we, now we are ready to calculate the, the final margin of error. So with our T sub C found to be 2. 626, I'm now going to substitute that in 2.626 in place for the T sub C in our formula. And now I'm going to multiply with the, the other fraction which now has all these two values uh, substituted in. So pointer 25 is for sample standard deviation divided by square root of 100 which is our sample size of the sample. And now we are ready for the final calculation. On my calculator here, let's say 2.626, I'm going to multiply with a fraction. So I'm going to need to open a parentheses and 0.25 divided by, and now a square root. So second square is for square root. Now our sample size here. 100 being put inside of the square root. Now, if anyone is having this early, I mean this uh, very new version of the TI-84, then make sure you hit right arrow key to exit out of square root mode. And now we're going to close our calculation syntax on the, on the calculator with the closing parentheses. Now we hit enter. And that is now our final margin of error over here. And so, on my writing board here, pointer 06, 5, 6, 5 is our final margin of error. And again, since we're still working with uh, the problem to estimate uh, gas price, and gas price is directly related to uh, money or currency. So in our nation, our, our money is uh, in two decimal places. So it makes perfect sense here that we round to two decimals. So here it's 0.07. But then, if anyone is doing uh, a, a, a confidence interval problem for a population mean but, uh, but different from uh, the money problem, then make sure you watch for your, your, your own uh, rounding requirements of your own problem that you're doing. So now 0.07 is our final margin of error. So that means now our final confidence in interval is ready. From where our sample mean being at a dollar sixty-four this time. I'm going to add and subtract the margin of error that we've just now found, 0 
And now that's how we've got our confidence interval. So what it says now in practical terms is that on June 1st, 2020, the national mean gas price, national mean gas price is guaranteed at 99% uh, confidence level to be inside of this interval where it is, it was simply just up and down by seven cents from where our sample mean value was, a dollar sixty-four. So population mean value is expected to be in the inside of that interval. And again, in case you are asked to write your interval in traditional formats, then we can just simply subtract this margin of error from the sample mean to obtain a lower end of our interval. So that would be a dollar fifty-seven for the low end, okay, and uh, that would be a dollar eighty-one for the high end by adding 0 0.07 to a dollar sixty-four to get our low end. But then once again, as another, as a different way to interpret it, interpret this final answer, then national mean gas price on June first, two thousand twenty is guaranteed at 99% uh, confidence level to be anywhere inside of this interval where low is $1.57 and high is $1.81. And the kind of interval being written this way, again, usually it's called the interval in traditional formats.